Hi y'all, hope you're all doing good. I got my Last Jedi poster because I actually love it. It's a great movie. Thank you for asking. I hope all you all like it and none of you guys are the bittersweet Star Wars fans that hate the movie. Anyways, I got a lot of Blu-rays to talk about, so let's just get into it. So to start off, uh, right before I made my last video, it was Black Friday, so I got a bunch of things there. So first off, I got War for the Planet of the Apes. It was like $14. You know, this is a good movie. I really loved it upon my first watch. I'll link my review for it in the description as well as everything else that I've already reviewed here. And on second watch, this wasn't as great as I remembered it. it it's really long, really slow, really melodramatic. It's still good. The effects are mind-blowing, don't get me wrong, but the story just drags, and I thought this was a quite melodramatic movie. I got Room. This is a fantastic film. Brie Larson, Jacob Tremblay, they are absolutely exceptional. One of the most heartbreaking and surreal films I've ever seen. I love this. One of my favorite dramas. The, it really shook me up, even on a second watch. This is a good one. A24, always kicking ass. If you haven't seen this, definitely do yourself a favor, because this is just a great film. Spider-Man Homecoming. This is a great addition to the MCU. Really like this one. Not the best. It's more low-key than the other MCU films, but I don't mind that. It's a fun movie. I don't know if you could watch it so many times like I have. It's definitely not like the first time around, but still still a good Blu-ray to have in the collection. And something that I've been wanting to add to my collection, but just like didn't feel like paying the money for it, the Nightcrawler Steelbook. This is by Mondo. Super gorgeous steelbook. You can take off the slipcover, it's like the map of LA and Jake Gyllenhaal. Great movie, great directorial debut, and a great steelbook. Next are just movies I bought for fun, trading my friend Daniel to get The Fault in Our Stars. This is just like a used library copy. Really good movie. Love it. Kind of my uh, young adult side of me that you guys don't necessarily always see. Really like this. Love the book. Good movie. Ansel Elgort and Shailene Woodley. They're fantastic. And then a movie that was definitely overlooked. Not a lot of people saw this. This one holds like a special place in my heart this year. A Ghost Story. Super gorgeous film. This is one of the very few films I've seen this year that I just, when, when they were done, I just thought to myself like, wow, that was art I just watched. This is one of those movies. This and Call Me By Your Name. But speaking about this, this is a great movie. Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara portray fantastic performances. Casey Affleck doesn't really say a lot because most of the time he's a ghost. But um, I love this, love the aspect ratio. Love the message of the story, love the whole time aspect to it. Um, the aspect ratio is absolutely gorgeous. Here's a screenshot. It's like a square. Um, great film. If you didn't see this in a theater, your home will have to do. It definitely won't do it justice, but you know what? This is a good movie. You should definitely watch it. I got Richard Linklater's first like major film, Slacker. This is on Criterion. Um, haven't had a chance to check this one out yet. But it's a really cool set. Um, look here, you open it up. Comes with a whole book, movie. I really like like the sewer cover as a case. Excited to check this one out. I really like The Last Flag Flying. That's his latest film with uh, Steve Carell, Lawrence Fishburne, Brian Cranston. Richard Linklater is one of my t favorite directors of all time. So really excited to check this one out eventually. And lastly, my wonderful girlfriend got me for our one year anniversary all the Star Wars movies on Blu-ray. I can't believe I didn't have them until now. All of them look fantastic. This is 1-6. to six. It's a perfect piece to get right before The Last Jedi came out. Really, really good stuff. Um, this looked surprisingly fantastic on, um, on Blu-ray. I didn't expect it to look this good. They did. Unfortunately, the original trilogies are the special edition cuts because, you know, you can't get a hold of the original theatrical versions. But still, it's Star Wars, of course. I love it. And I have a few movies to review. First up, sent over from Elevation Pictures. This is an A24, but A24 doesn't really release in Canada. Good time. Yes, I know, it's the DVD. When I first saw this, I'll post my video review in the description. I did not like it. I didn't get it. Didn't think it was for me. 
Didn't know what the point was. It, I just thought it was a weird movie. But after so many people told me, Ben, you're wrong. Ben, you're dumb. Ben, this is a great movie. In many months of rethinking that, I decided to watch it again. And my entire vision of the movie changed. This is a great movie. Josh and Benny Safdie have directed a completely like visceral and heavy-weighted, manipulative movie. This movie's like depressing and sad and intense. And the lights in the movie, I mean, you can even tell from the cover and the back, the lights in the movie are just like so ecstatic and neon. And you really get a feel for like the dark, dirty parts of New York City. It takes place in Queens. And basically Connie, who's played by Robert Pattinson, who portrays one of the best performances of the year, is trying to break his brother out of jail. And his, his brother's put in the hospital. He's trying to break him out. And he breaks him out. And things just go wrong. I've heard the comparison how good time is like the film equivalent of getting five stars in GTA. And although that might be true, I wouldn't recommend this movie to GTA fans. I would recommend this movie to cinephiles and art house lovers. This is a good one for you. A24, once again, hitting it up. I've never seen a bad movie from them now, since, you know, I like this one now. But, um, I'm, I'm happy I gave this a second chance. And if you didn't like this upon the first watch, you should give this a second chance, too, because you may be surprised. Sent over from Warner Brothers, the Lego Ninjago movie. I was excited to see this because the last two Lego movies were so good, and I was disappointed by the Lego Ninjago movie. It's really nothing special. The jokes are funny, but overall, about less than halfway through, this just gets boring. It feels like a paint by numbers kids adventure movie. Um, it follows beat by beat of the Lego movie. There's not a whole lot different than this. It's about a it's about a son and a dad reconnecting. And although that like Dave Franco and Jackie Chan were okay in this, I really just couldn't find so much to enjoy with this. It was not special at all. And uh, this is a kid movie you can pass. I mean, if you have kids, sure, you can watch it with them. They'll like it, but there's better kids movies out. Finally, also sent over from Warner Brothers, one of my favorite movies of this year, Dunkirk. Now, this movie is exceptional. I love it so, so, so much. Mainly because it utilizes the IMAX format so well. I saw it in IMAX four times. One time an IMAX laser, two times an IMAX 70 millimeter, and one time just IMAX digital. And it's the way it's the way you gotta watch this movie. If you didn't see this in IMAX, there's no way you'll be able to appreciate it as much as somebody who has seen it in IMAX. And sure, you don't have an IMAX theater at your home, but I gotta say, this is the best looking Blu-ray I've ever owned. Because the movie was shot on 65 millimeter IMAX, you can just tell the quality. The quality of this movie is absolutely gorgeous. It looks so beautiful on my TV. I just have like a crappy like 40 inch HD 1080p TV. And I felt like again I was on Dunkirk because the quality of this movie is fantastic. The score by Hans Zimmer, the acting, although nothing special, you just feel like you're following these soldiers going through as something as horrifying as getting cornered by an army. And um, this is a fantastic story, a fantastic true story. Christopher Nolan's arguably best directed movie yet, Dunkirk, is an absolute masterwork of a film. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. This, this is from a little bit later. The holidays caught up to me and I never got a chance to post the stuff you just watched. So I have even more movies to talk about right now, so here we go. So these are kind of the things I just bought for fun because I wanted them. The first thing I found out is Redbox is a service basically in the States, and they used to have in Canada, but I don't think it lasted that long, where it's a vending machine. You can go to a like, grocery store and stuff. You go, you choose a movie, and you can rent it. But something I just found out is you can buy used Redbox movies for like five bucks each. So I got The Big Sick and It Comes at Night, both movies I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I reviewed The Big Sick back in the summer. I'll post a review 
I'll post a link to my review of The Big Sick in the description as well as everything else I'm talking about here that I've already reviewed. Uh, but these really good movies, highly recommend. I picked up Ex Machina on Blu-ray. I was thinking about just getting the 4K, but this was on sale for like $4.99, so it's $8.24. A24 doesn't really exist in Canada, so I kind of wanted to get something with the A24 name on it, so I decided to pick this up. Love this one. I'll definitely watch this again before Annihilation, because Alex Garland directed both, obviously. Apparently, this is quite difficult to find. Blade Runner, the final cut on 4K, and it was on Amazon for like 18 bucks, so I picked this up. And I, uh, this is good because it has special features, and... Um, my copy of Plane Runner didn't that Amazon Canada sent me. It was weird. It was just like just the disc and as soon as I put in the disc, the movie just starts playing like there's no menu or anything. So I was happy to get another copy of Blade Runner. And um, this is kind of weird because all the special features are on DVD, but at least they're there. And um, apparently, because the special features discs were from an older collection of Blade Runner, so they say like disc one, disc two, and disc four, and they're on DVD, disc three and disc two like don't exist, and apparently some people were sent like disc three, and some weren't, very confusing, but overall, happy to have this, looks fantastic in 4K. Well, I picked up one of my favorite movies of the year, I think it's number 10 on my top 10 of 2017, which will be posted very soon, Mother. I love this movie, Re like so much, Darren Aronofsky created such a think piece of a movie um, and I love the art for this especially with the 4k because of just how shiny it is uh, wonderful does it need to be watched in 4k I don't think so it was shot in 16 millimeter but overall it's a gorgeous film Jennifer Lawrence is outstanding in my opinion and um, I really like this one I also picked up some criterions down in Florida I got fantastic mr. Fox this is such a great movie. Uh, I'd seen it when I was little, but um, I was really happy to watch this one again. Wes Anderson is such a brilliant director, and I think this might be one of his best directed movies. Um, the animation is breathtaking. Might be some of the best animation I've ever seen. It's stop motion. The cast is absolutely incredible. We got George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Willem Dafoe's in it, Owen Wilson, Jason... Jason Schwartzman. The cast is incredible. The movie's incredible. It's like a heist movie for kids. Definitely watch this one if you haven't seen it. This copy was a little beat up that I got at Barnes & Noble, but hey, I wanted to get it, so I did. Something else that released on Criterion this month, I was so excited to get The Breakfast Club on Criterion. This is the world we're living in now, and it's a great world, I gotta tell you. The special features on this are absolutely phenomenal. There's so much. There's, um, I think, like over 50 minutes of deleted scenes that, or extended scenes that aren't in the movie. It's bad quality, the deleted scenes, but it's the only quality they could really find. So it's cool that like there's almost an hour more of The Breakfast Club that you haven't seen. Um, it's very cool. There's lots of interviews, new interviews, old interviews and the 4K restoration of this. It comes on Blu-ray, but it's restored in 4K. The quality, it, like, it looks like it's a new movie. It's crazy. It's a beautiful set. You go in here, um, in the back, there's some art of The Breakfast Club. Honestly, this is one of the best high school movies ever made. It's like the OG high school movie. And um, if you're into kind of like newer ones like I am, Super bad, Edge of 17, Ladybird. Give this one a watch if you haven't. Highly recommend. And Warner Brothers sent me some movies to review. And these are some pretty exciting movies, if I have to say. So to start off with, we got It. And uh, this movie just blew up the world. Nobody was expecting it to be this successful. It to be most successful. I could joke about that this entire review. Anyways, It. Good movie, almost great. I liked it. I made a video for it. You can see it below. I enjoy this movie. The kids are really good. Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise is fantastic. I don't think it's really that scary. It's a fun story though. It really reminds me of Stranger Things. Not in a bad way. And uh, overall, it's a fun one. It's a little long, but 
For a movie that was almost designed to be seen by as many people as it did, even though I was surprised that this many people saw it, you know, it's a little mainstream for my like. There's not a whole lot of cinema exploration, not a lot of experimentation done. But um, it's a little by the numbers, but for a movie of its quality, it's definitely better than some other stuff that we're getting. So it was definitely a good time. Uh, the special features are okay. There's nothing too special about it. There's some deleted scenes and extended scenes. But uh, overall, super good. 4K looks good. Gonna be seeing that a lot. And one of my favorite movies of the year, if you can't tell, Blade Runner 2049. This movie looks stunning in 4K. You will be shocked if you watch this that way. I could talk about this movie for hours and hours, but I won't keep you too long. Denis Villeneuve, this might be his best directed movie yet. Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford, Anna de Armas. So many people kick so much ass. The special features in this are pretty good. You're getting around like, I think, um, it's like 30, 40 minutes of just like behind the scenes stuff, Denis Villeneuve talking. It's nothing too special. I would have loved, I would have killed for a commentary, but there's not one on here, which is a little disappointing. I bought a PlayStation VR over the Christmas break, and so they sent me the Blade Runner 2049 3D version as well. Um, so I watched this in VR, and um, did I want to throw up by the end? Yeah, not because it's a gross movie, but because VR makes me kind of sick. But um, this was surely worth watching in VR because if you don't know you can put a 3D Blu-ray into your PS4 and if you have PlayStation VR it plays in 3D since like it manipulates the two lenses and uh, this looks so 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 cool in 3D. I heard it wasn't that good in 3D in theaters but I know some of the time they play with it like when they're releasing it on home video I don't know if that's the case here but um you could definitely I, like there's a sense of a lot of depth and I don't know if that's because I watched it in VR I was like completely immersed in the movie but super cool super cool in 3d I have many codes for this not many I have two codes I'll be giving them away I'm giving an it code away and other stuff too so um pay attention to Twitter my Twitter is linked in bio and uh, my Twitter is linked in the description I'm giving many codes away so You'll definitely want to check that out. And as we always end these videos off, I always, I, I don't always, I tend to get steelbooks some of the time. And um, I got the Kingsman 2 steelbook. It's a really cool design. It's like a comic book. I think it's drawn by a comic book artist. Uh, ve very, very cool design. Uh, I love Kingsman 2 so much. I think it was better the second time. I liked it better than The Last Jedi. And, um... It's a damn good movie! It's so much fun. This is like the quintessential action comedy. I had so much fun watching this in the theaters. I had even more watching it at home. This is definitely one to watch if you like the first one. A little disappointed that my two Kingsman books don't really go together, but they did re-release the original Kingsman on a different steelbook that matches the art style of this. So if you want to get both, you definitely can. It's just a shame that like, they don't work together. So guys, that's my Blu-ray update. I have reviews for Mother, Blade Runner, It, everything in the description. Go check it out. Um, I'll be back here very, very soon. I have a double header Blu-ray review for two movies that I haven't seen already. The Killing of a Sacred Deer and Breathe. I haven't seen them yet. Well, I've seen Sacred Deer, but I haven't talked about it yet. I haven't seen Breathe. And I'll be reviewing those very shortly. Another video, I think. I might do a written. I don't know. And I'll have my top 10 video coming out very soon. Exciting stuff. I've seen so many movies this year. Too many to talk about. But I will be talking about the 10 best very soon. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.